Welcome to Infinity Rewatch. Ho, ho, ho. Jingle, Ooh. jangle. That's how you know it's the holidays because we say words like jingle and ho. Otherwise, we never say those words. <laughs> Yeah, no, exactly. All right, so today is a fun subject as we're trying some new content on Infinity Rewatch. Uh, finally getting together in person a bit more, which is yes. really fun. It's nice to have my best friend here. And today, we're going to be talking about uh, something pretty cool. What's, the, what's on the agenda today, actually? Oh, what's boy. on the agenda? Today's exciting. This is something that I've wanted to do for probably a year. A uh, year? Yeah. Jeez. Oh, my God. Just because it's something I never thought of. And, and, like, when we started the podcast, it was already, like, too late to do it with the other phases. Mm. But I wanted to take a whole phase from beginning to end and just look back at it and say what our top five favorite moments were of that phase. And phase four is so varied because it's our first time getting a bunch of films and a bunch of shows. Yes. And two specials. So there's a lot to work with. Mm -hmm. So the the breadth of it all it just it feels right for this and also because it's such a different phase i feel like if we do this for phase three everybody would be like infinity war snap end game snap, snap. <laughs> it's <laughs> snap all the snapping so have you played marvel snap it's a pretty good game i have played marvel snap so it's so very very fun sorry i just speaking of snap and marvel it's just synonymous now with it it is <laughs> snap. do you snap, snap. often i ne almost never snap. i always snap you always snap I always snap it's a wild man because i went three out of four times so if i snap and the person snaps as well i'm getting on average like 24 points <laughs> did you hear that guys crusader just challenged you to snap him. When multiplayer comes live, I will open invitations. Come at, come at me. Come at me, peoples. I hope that happens soon. Yeah. That happens really Speaking soon. of happening soon, let's talk about phase four because phase five is coming soon. Yes. We literally have to wait two months, pretty much, before phase five kicks off. And I think it's going to kick off pretty epic. But that being said, this is a nice way to review phase four. And we're going to talk about our top five moments each. Yes. Okay, top five yeah. moments each of what happened in phase Our favorite moments of phase four. Phase four. And we, I asked you this before, and I can't remember our answers. But how many crossover moments do you think we have? I think I said one. I'm not, I, so I'm going to preface this by, I might cheat a little bit here. I might... I, I think we have rules for this, which is obviously we're picking our top moments. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to play it carefully, um, and I'm going to say yes. I think we might have two crossover moments. Two cross. Interesting. Yeah. Oh. I'm pretty. I'm pretty confident. I'm pretty okay. confident. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, okay. I think we should dive into it. All right. I think we should dive into it. Starting with number five. Number five. In no particular order. <laughs> Oh, okay. I put mine in a... Oh, no, no. Put it in order then. All right. Uh, what's your number five, Ryan? Oh, we're starting with me. Yeah, oh, go my goodness. All right. The first moment I have is... Um, the first top moment I have from the bottom here is... Okay. It is Moon Knight and Elsa Bloodstone and the Rise of the Supernatural. Uh, that is, gotta say, out of Phase 4, one of the real gems is the talks of breaking down the different avenues of the MCU. Now you can go down. You got your street-level heroes, mm -hmm. you know, with your Spider-Mans, and your, you know, technically your Doc Strange. But Doctor Strange segues us into the supernatural avenue, and that's getting exciting. Like, Moon Knight, for me, was a lot of fun. It was a very unique character. Not only did they put, like, a lot of kind of mystery to the character, and, you know, it will kind of open up a little conversation later, but, like, though his events were pretty isolated to him, they are pretty high scale in terms of supernatural. But what I like, too, is how dark the supernatural stories are. In fact, if you look at Doctor Strange, and you look at Moon Knight, and you look at Elsa Bloodstone, they are very violent, and they are very gruesome. Like, just, like... Very, yeah, just very intense. Mm -hmm. um, kind of reminds me of, like, the first Blade movie kind of intense. You know what I mean? So I love it, I, 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 and I'm loving where it's going. And I think that really kicks off my list well for, like, just setting the tone of what's, what's to come and why it's one of my favorite moments from Phase 4. Because it tells you... It sets the stage for so much, and it tells you, like, hey, yeah. we got this to look forward to. Absolutely. Yeah, you know, it, but yes, but it also is, like, just showing the the breadth, the breadth 
of uh, content yeah. and where they can go with this stuff. And I can't wait to see. I like that. It just it got me so hyped for Blade, and that's right. what that's what really is getting you know getting me going. And that's cool because that's a unique way for the MCU to hype something mm-hmm. because normally their idea of hype is. I know this wasn't a Blade movie, but here's a cameo of Blade. Hey, but this is something different because it's like, here is a story. Yes. And here is another story. Mm -hmm. And it's not about, ooh, look who popped up at the end. It's about, because this exists, you know you're going to get this. It's only a matter of time. Exactly. It's, it's, yeah, it's very much that. It's, you know, it's like a series of toys when they come out. When you get the first one... You know there's a set that belongs yeah. to it, and then you want to get into it. Kids, we used to have these things called toys. They weren't apps. They were <laughs> made of plastic, and you would hold them, and they'd be shaped like humans. You yeah. should look them up. Um, <laughs> that's a good one, Ryan. I like that. Uh, by the way, I didn't introduce either of us. I'm bad at this. I'm Andrew. He's Ryan. That's the name of the, the people who host this show. <laughs> there we go. Well, you know, with the power of editing, we could just throw in some name tags. Whoa! Whoa! Name tags! I have to wear name tags on the first day of class every year so that all the kids know my name and I know all of theirs. There you go. It works out. Well, sometimes I forget what my name is and I have to check my chest. So, my number five. Let me make sure I have the right one here. Fantasia's number five. Yes. Okay. Uh, you, you have to have notes. I do. Amateur. Uh, sorry. <laughs> My cool own. people don't use notes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we'll see, because this is actually about a very cool person. Oh, damn it. In fact, a very cool person observing another very cool person. Ah, oh, damn it. <laughs> and you recently just told me how you recently discovered how cool one of these people was. Because my number five, Ryan, is... Natasha Romanov watching Octopussy alone in her trailer in Black Widow the movie. Oh my god. <laughs> I this, wow, you went a whole different level of this top yes. top moments here. Oh my god. What does that even like what does that have to do with anything other than though it is an amazing movie? If you I just learned about how amazing the Roger Moore James Bond movies are. I've never seen any of them and I just picked up Moonraker and Octopussy and they were beyond amazing. They were probably like just the ridiculous nature of these movies, but yet the fun you can have and yet the storytelling you can have. It's pretty good. So much fun. One, the guy in Octopus, he has a yo-yo that's got a blade on it. Like, come on. That thing is amazing. Um, no, the reason I picked that for a number five is because out of a whole movie that I loved because it gave Natasha this whole other layer that we didn't even know she had. Right. And it introduced us to a character that we had already known Mm -hmm. in a really cool way. Out of that whole movie, this scene of her watching a James Bond movie in her trailer by herself and she's mouthing along to it because she's seen it so many times, Mm -hmm. it tells us so much without her even needing to say a word. Yeah. It's like this woman has a very solitary life. We can tell from her face she's in a happy place. She almost never looks this happy. And that's sweet and kind of heartbreaking at the same time because her happy place is a very lonely existence. And it's not even doing something that's like outside of her normal wheelhouse because what's she doing? She's a spy and she's watching a movie about a spy. Yeah. So it, there's, there's just so much going on there. And the fact that that is her life and that is how she just chooses to relax. I don't know. It just spoke volumes about Black Widow to me. And... I, like I said, when we talked about that movie, I love that character even more now because of it. She's my second favorite Avenger after Hulk. Mm. And that scene is just a prime example of why that was such a great character piece. Oh, so, yeah. Black Widow and James Bond, they go together like peanut butter and spaghetti. <laughs> and if you haven't tried that, do yourself a favor. Do yourself a favor. All right, let's jump in to my number four, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, so number four of my top phase four MCU moments comes into play with uh, the Illuminati. Ooh. Enter the Illuminati. Uh, what I like about particularly this moment is not, again, I'm, I'm always looking to, this is both good and bad. And this is going to be kind of the theme of my like entire list. Uh, and it's it's a double-edged sword. And you, you'll see why in a second. Like Thanos' sword. Yeah, it likes it, and I don't know. It's not a practical weapon by any stretch of the <laughs> imagination. Um, so this one, the rise of the Illuminati, uh, or sorry, enter the Illuminati. Enter the Illuminati uh, is both the most exciting thing in the world, 
But it's also interesting what they did because what they're doing with this particular series here is they're introducing all sorts of new characters. Um, and what I like is they're not holding back. The fact that we got Black Bolt, we got, uh, we got um, uh, uh, Captain Carter, and on top of that, we got Professor X. Like, they're just, like, throwing in all these new characters, and that's huge. That's a really big deal to me because with that in mind, what's going to happen is is that we're just going to see more characters being placed in. Like, we got Th uh, Hercules and Thor, and I was joking about that. When we did our recording, I was like, I would love to see him. I thought it was going to be the longest shot. Like, I was like, yeah, they're going to throw Zeus in it and tease Hercules. No, he was... He had his cameo, like he had a full cam, full blown cameo moment. So, Enter the Illuminati is kind of like a promise in Phase Five that you're gonna. It's kind of like tasting the water, like or sorry, putting your foot in the water, uh, dipping your toe in the water to feel what kind of temperature it is. Because what you're going to see now in Phase Five is you're going to see potentially vari variants of all sorts of heroes you may know and love that you may not uh, may not have seen in the MCU. We may get a Punisher. He may not be uh, our Punisher that we know from Daredevil, but we may get him. He may be a variant. But the fact that they're pulling from the roster and just, like, throwing in all these heroes, I am super excited. Yeah, that, that opens up a lot of multiversal doors and the idea of seeing, like, we know ish sort of that that reed richards is probably not going to be the reed richards no but the fact but, that it happened it just check off the box yeah like, so it's a great way to check those boxes give the fans what they want but also mm -hmm. give the mcu what it needs absolutely like for example we may never get the ghost rider we want but we may get a variant ghost rider we may get uh you know uh we may get johnny blaze you know mm -hmm. it may happen but more, more likely, we'll get a newer Ghost Rider, Danny Ketch, uh, Robbie Reyes, whoever you think. Like, we may get them back, but, like, again, it'll be a variant, but at least the box will be checked. Like, we don't... The beauty of what the Illuminati demonstrate is we don't have to get a whole story about, for example, Black Bolt. But right. we at least have seen him in a proper representation. Right. Um, and just the icing on the cake of having it be... Uh, what's his name? Um, oh, I'm so sorry, Mr. Bolt. What's the guy, the guy who played? Oh, uh, Ensign. Uh, An 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 something Ensign. Something, yeah, something. James like Ensign, that. something like that. And, yeah, I'm so sorry. I don't think anybody watched Eternals or Immortals. I mean, don't judge me. Um, but yeah, the fact that it's that actor coming back to reprise that role, it's love for what they did. Mm -hmm. It's ticking the box. It's creating and building the world, which is what every Marvel movie and show should always keep doing. So, yeah, that Illuminati thing was a great, great addition. And I hope that we see more, not necessarily more Illuminati scenes. But Anson Mount. Anson Mount. Thank you. That's him. You're welcome, Anson. Um, I hope we see not necessarily more Illuminati scenes, but more scenes of variants interacting with the MCU prime mm -hmm. characters especially it would be cool if you know eric banna hulk interacts with with mark ruffalo hulk like a variant interacts with their variant oh i would love that right oh my god yes so maybe we'll see that soon i mean there is a lot of hulk stuff coming so let's mm -hmm. cross our fingers i like that sign me hulk. up sign me up in red ink Ooh. There's red, hulk. Ooh. Mm, red smash uh, okay, my number four. You're right. Fantasia's number four. It's very fitting that because this is a holiday episode. Because my number four is all about a certain Mr. Grinch in a white suit showing up in Hawkeye. Oh. You're the mean one. Okay, I'm a little shocked. I am a little surprised because that should have ranked a lot higher on your list. He is your boy. Big Willie is your boy. Yes. And you put him in fourth of all. It took it took some work and some self control, Ryan. Because you're right. Initially, <laughs> I wrote the list and uh, the list, and I'm like, okay, King Ben number one, and everything else is, and then <laughs> everything had, else doesn't matter. Yeah, I, I had to stop myself and take a breath and, and think. Okay, Andrew, this is a big moment for you, but there are three moments in Phase Four that you love that are more powerful than this that deserve to be above this, especially 
um, the fact that Kingpin got A, one episode, and B, our first shot of him is on a blurry cell phone. Yes. So that really diminished the points for me. Uh, if they had introduced him in a cooler way, maybe this would be number three or number two. I don't know. But we got Kingpin. He's D'Onofrio Kingpin is in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and he's got a white shirt, and he's coming back for at least two more shows, and maybe, maybe Spider-Man 4. Maybe, please, <laughs> please. Uh, so that would be like the WrestleMania of of the MCU Spider-Man movies. Like the grudge match of all grudge matches oh, of Kingpin versus Spider-Man. Like there are trading cards of that. There are comic books of that. And like there are toys of that. And the cartoon. There's been cartoons of that. Like you, you couldn't ask for a better you know match. No. I, at that point, I think I would, after that, I think I would stop seeing Spider-Man movies because I'd be like, it's all downhill. From <laughs> There's me. nothing better. There's no, There's nothing better. No, I'm not. I'm never going to get another moment like this. So that's, again, that was a promise in the same way that Moon Knight and also Bloodstone was a promise where it was a... Not in your face promise, but it was an assurance that because you have gotten this, because you got this moment in Hawkeye of Kingpin is here, Big Willie is actually a thing, you're going to get more. Mm -hmm. And just finally seeing him be part of this world in the physical sense that I wanted him to be part of this world was glorious. And that it happened with probably one of the best needle drops in Marvel too. Like it was all, it was working. It was all working. It, like it, if it hadn't been for that damn cell phone picture, it would have been just like every 10 out of 10 way you could possibly introduce a character. But I'm so happy he's here, Ryan. Mm -hmm. And I hope, uh, I hope he shows up in everything from now on. Put him in Eternals 4. And Eternals 4 is all about this, them trying to buy property off of him. Yeah. And they're like, well, there's 10 of us. We need a house. And he's like, well, I've got a, I've got a condo for you, but it's going to cost you. And, <laughs> yeah. That's, that's what I want. Yeah. Um, that's, that's really good, actually. I, I, I'm really surprised, though. But I, I get the why. I get it. I get it why you put him there. But yeah, I mean, we do. So this, this confirms that we have one crossover. Yeah, I will talk about it, but it's not it's not next in my entry. Interesting. I will okay. get there. Okay. I will get there. All right. It's not next in my entry, but I'll get there. All right. My next uh, phase four moment is um, my next phase four. Uh, sorry, let me start it again. My next phase four moment is breaking the multiverse. Uh, this one is huge. Now, this one kind of plays into uh, Spider-Man uh, No Way Home, which was a big one. And also breaks into Loki. So it kind of brings those two together. Now, why this is huge for me is that... Um, why this is, I can't even... I, uh, this one's really hard for me to bring in. Okay, why this is huge for me is because Marvel... Playing on the double-edged sword, uh, double sword idea is that, again, not everything has to be have consequence to the MCU. But this is where it shines and really makes the sword look good because when it's done right, it's pretty epic. And it really demonstrates how this world can change and how it's impacted. Mm -hmm. When we came out of the Thanos snap, it like one of the things my brother and I have said, you and I have talked about is the last thing you want to do, or sorry, the first thing you, or yeah, the last thing you want to do right now is bring the Avengers back together as quickly as possible. Because you need to, like, they just survived a war. And, you know, they lost, technically, they've lost three major heroes. And, like, they're not going to just rally together again and, like, some new threat's going to come. No. Right now, this is, like, you know, post-war, you know, there's some new people discovering new powers. The world's changed a little bit. But, you know, something is building. Something is cooking. And we don't need to get there right this second. We need to understand where the world is at right now, right? And that's why She-Hulk had some moments. That's why Miss Marvel had some moments. That's why Hawkeye even had moments. Like, there's just, like, like where does the world go from here? And to me, the, the, 
the multiverse completely breaking down and like completely changing. This will not only, this story will not only be just a joyride to go through, but it just goes to show like how the MCU can change and can adapt, but more importantly, can stay relevant. Because as long as you can convince the audience that the MCU world is changing, then you're going to get really different stories. And to me, that's exciting. Yes. I've gotten my, I, I'm not going to lie, as a comic book fan, I can, I can easily say at this point, I have gotten more than my fill of like the moments I've been looking for. You know what I mean? Like Captain America, First Avenger, that was a huge check off my box. It just felt literally like reading pages from a comic book. You know, same with, I, I will even say it was same with Love and Thunder. Like, Love and Thunder was a fun ride. Ragnarok was a fun ride. But, like, I did get moments where I'm like, okay, this, this checks off the box, right? Mysterio. I got Mysterio yes. of all things, which was amazing. Um, and so, you know, at the same time, I want stories to be different. And that's why, like, you know, a lot of people didn't like She-Hulk. But the fact, it, fact of the matter is, is, like, she told you from the get-go, this is not your typical story. This is her story. And I love that it's literally like a day-to-day -day look in her life. And one of the things I learned from like her comics is it's very much the same. Like, you know, it's like Monday at the office, Tuesday at the office. Now, you know, Tuesday at the office might have Victor Von Doom's son come in. Yes. And he might try to escape and he's looking and it's a whole thing. But at the same time, you know what I mean? Like it's still a it's just still like a day-to-day -day life in this person's world plus superpowers. Right. And the the breaking of the multiverse is so important because, you know, like you're saying, it's got to follow Endgame. Yes. It's got to follow that. And it needs Which is super hard to do, by the way. Yes, very hard. Because not only from a storytelling standpoint, mm -hmm. but just from the entertainment industry standpoint. How do you follow the biggest movie ever made? Yeah. Like, you can't just be like, okay, well, let's make another the biggest movie ever made like you that's not how it works you're that's a recipe for disaster and phase four gets all kinds of flack for being i don't know what but it gets lots of flack for for just people not liking it as much and i think what we need to understand is we got to rein in that expectation that from now on everything is going to be like endgame because it, it can't it shouldn't uh that's why endgame is special because there's not really a whole lot like it so, like you're saying, you've got to see what the world is like after that. Mm -hmm. You've got to spend a phase looking, not just planting seeds in this garden, but giving the audience an idea of what this garden looks like. How big is it? What are the dimensions? Is there a nice fence around it? Yeah. You know, is there shade in this garden? Are there a lot of bees? Am I going to get stung? I don't know what this place is. Why am I caring if we plant seeds in it if I don't even know what it's going to look like in the long run? So, I want us to spend how we spent phase four, which is building things and saying okay look at this look at that guy we never met him before right but he's got 10 rings and his dad was kind of a jerk let's see what that's all about <laughs> and then look over here she's green there's a green lady she's a lawyer okay look at this girl from jersey what is she is she a mutant i think she is she's got crystal power stuff and then all of a sudden now you can take a step back and look at it and say oh and this all fits really well in that garden that was shaped and formed by the biggest movie ever made yeah, absolutely and without having that, it, like if, if the next movie after Endgame was Kang Dynasty, it's like, that's not how storytelling works. No. And I really hope that Phase 7 is the same as Phase 4 was, where whatever the hell happens after Secret Wars is going to be crazy, or as Jar Jar would say, crazy. <laughs> so we need Phase 7 to, to, again, look at the world and say, wow, look how different this world is now that you know, Christine Everhart has had her way with planet Earth. Uh, before we get to Galactus, though, hey, look who it is. It's Blue Marvel. Let's let's spend some time with him. We don't know him yet, right? So we need to follow those beats, and I think that's a great a great there, choice for your and name. and even still going forward to the events of Kang Dynasty, I still think there are a ton of heroes we need to introduce. In fact, I think Daredevil being eighteen episodes long. Uh, will be nothing but like huge introductions to a lot of heroes. Um, I mean, there's still some major players that we still need to see. Nova, yes, right. We're getting Wonder Man, that's for sure. Uh, we're getting Warlock, yeah. So th there is still 
we need to spend time with these characters before we have, you know, some big comic book event, comic book event. They do it in the comics, people. They have some massive civil war event. And then guess what? The comics following, following that are really boring because it's all the aftermath. Yeah. That's how it's got to roll. That's, that's storytelling. You don't like it? Why are you watching? Yeah. (laughs) Go to bed. (laughs) <laughs> all right that's a great number three i like that thank a lot you. thank you uh my number three is um from i'm trying to to track here how much of our choices so far have been movie related or disney plus related. <laughs> but see the, the, i'm jumping Your, all yours over. was yeah, yeah yours is really interwoven in there so far yeah. i've had one disney plus and one movie. Yeah. This one is also a Disney Plus. You had a Black Widow movie in this one, which is yeah. really controversial. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, Dracov's daughter come at me. I don't care. <laughs> but my number three is also from a Disney Plus. And it's a moment that really is framed around a single line of dialogue. Wow. Man, you are really specific. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And it's a line of dialogue that as soon as I say it, you're going to know who said it and what it's from. Okay. But it is... Perfect, and it is this. What is grief but love persevering? Mm, yeah. Right. Oh, all the feels in that one. Wandavision, great show. That, um, that just felt to me like a mission statement for life. Like, talk about art imitating life or art transcending the boundaries of whatever borders it has. That is something that I'll probably be saying for the rest of my life. Mm-hmm. You know, if I'm talking to somebody who's in a bad way, I'd be like, hey, what is grief if not love persevering? Right? Yeah. That, um, you know, Avengers, even though the whole MCU thing has been coming, brought to you by Disney, um, it doesn't really have a lot of the Disney schmaltz, which is a good thing because it's like it's doing its own thing. Right. Um, and Disney loves to, you know, cover their animated movies with morals and something like that. Something that they can put in your pocket and take home with you after the movie's done. Um, but Avengers and, and MCU has never really been that kind of thing. But all of a sudden here comes this line that they give us. That's like, you know what? This is a more adult line than you would get in like a Disney schmaltz kind of message. And it's so powerful that, like, I can't not learn from this. Yes. I, I can't not. Yeah. So I have to give mad kudos to all the writers um, of WandaVision, whoever came up with this, whether it was Jack Schaefer or whoever had that call. But that's going to, I think, resonate throughout all the MCU as well. That's going to be something that we have to keep reminding ourselves. And I wouldn't doubt it if we, uh, like, I wouldn't be surprised if we don't, if we hear that line again, whether in the vision show that's coming Mm -hmm. or next time we see Wanda, which could be there. I don't know, but that moral is going to come into play because it's really important. And in a franchise where people die, that's going to come up. So, yeah. One thing I've always loved from like older movies is something you take away from it. And, and MCU, they have they have their moments for sure. But I got to say, recently, I think the closest thing is is if not the thing is what Vision definitely what Vision said. Like, mm-hmm. oh. I, I mean, that show truly demonstrates exactly what the kind of after school special moments that you have within Marvel Comics is like how you identify with like these emotional moments and yes. how you can like you know mend relationships through those moments um and yeah it you know um uh, when you inter- internalize those kind of things it, yeah it really can help you create new perspective on your own thing on, on things going through your own life so yeah and gotta give you props that's what art is all about right yeah. so mm-hmm. there you go scorsese you don't think it's art watch wandavision my friend mm-hmm Watch now. We're, there's going to be a video on YouTube in like a month where Scorsese's like, you know what? I watched it, and it wasn't as good as my pictures, but I liked it. Because what is grief if not love persevering? Right. So it's going to happen. I would love to see Martin Scorsese do a vlog on his reaction to like a good Marvel project. I, that would oh, just be imagine. a dream come true. But he knows like 
he, he brings up stuff that we don't even... He, God. He's like, you know, in, in issue number 43 of Silver Surfer, if you look at how Fire Lord was depicted, it, it's completely wrong. <laughs> Marvel got it all wrong. Oh, for sure. <laughs> I mean, that, you know, but yeah, Avatar Last Airbender is a really good example. There's so many Iroh moments that, like, well, like take come from, um, that I take away from it. Yes. Um, but yeah, and I, I got to give you props. That's a, that's a deep, that's a deep face phase four top moment yeah Still. that one hit me i could not put it here yeah no that's true all right now on to number two this is where we're going to start seeing some crossover i can feel it it's happening this is where uh actually no i don't think it's happening yet Ooh. okay and it could happen it could happen okay i'm actually trying to think about it uh yes actually no it does happen okay uh so this is the first one where we cross over and that is for me i i'd like to dub this moment as marvel team-ups mm. now if you read the comics you've collected the trading cards marvel team-ups is like not a new concept it's no. been around many times but it's literally a tag team of like two very popular heroes dealing with an event it doesn't have to be avengers level it doesn't have to be some sort of big group it's just you know character a and character b meet up they're ha- they're dealing with a common problem and bing bang boom they're done yes uh, so this to me is a really cool uh, i think this phase in particular did it now they didn't pioneer it in this phase because i would say the first time it ever happened like the true buddy cop moment um is where it really shined was definitely uh, Ant Man, Ant Man and the Falcon. Oh, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Is that? Well, first of all, we didn't know it was coming. That was the big one for me. It was like no one knew the Falcon was in the movie until you saw the movie, mm-hmm. and uh, and it was a nice surprise because it just it kind of just reminds you how small the world is. And to me, this is where I dub it the Marvel team up because. She-Hulk had Daredevil. We unfortunately knew it was coming, but to be fair, we didn't know if it was a cameo, if it was, if he had a whole episode until like, I think it was like like close to like two episodes away. They said it was like, he has a whole episode kind of thing. So I want to see more of this, honestly, going forward. I think Disney Plus shows could really benefit from doing it more. I mean, Loki did do it as well, uh, kind of having the Enchantress slash Lady Loki character. Um... But, like, the the buddy cop thing, it really shines for me, and it really makes the show a bit more interesting and fun. And so, WandaVision was a good example, and, and also part of my, you know, part of my favorite moments. Because, again, it was about the two of them, but that's what I want. Like, why can't it be, like, why can't we have, like, a Spider-Man and Human Torch Marvel team-up Disney Plus series, where it's, like, yeah. literally them together? Because they go to school together, right? And they run into other characters as well. So this is where we cross over once. Um, just the Marvel team up. So WandaVision, uh, Sang Chi and Wong, um, they get a they get a moment together at the end of the movie, but they're still now working together. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then um, another Marvel team up was in uh, uh, She Hulk with Daredevil, Doctor Strange and Multiverse of Madness with uh, uh, America Chavez, and. Oh man, I feel like I'm missing one. Hawkeye, yeah, yeah, Hawkeye yeah. and Kate Bishop. So I want to see more of that. Honestly, I, you don't have to advertise the character being in it, but even if this, the character is a major part of the story, like Hawkeye and Kate Bishop, yes, give me more Marvel team ups. They don't have to be big group films. They can be fun two characters, and I'm kind of getting tired of like one character has to be in the entire show, and then like a character has to be a cameo because you don't want to take away from the spotlight. There's no taking away from the spotlight here. You are now, like, once you are enrolled in the Marvel world, then you are going to be known as that character. If you've nailed it, you will be forever remembered as that character. Like, She-Hulk, for me, Tatiana, she nailed it. She nailed it. You know, regardless of how you may feel about the show, she is that character. She embodies the humor, the quick wit of Jennifer Walters. Um, and you know, Daredevil, perfect example. Charlie Cox will never, I don't think at this point, and I'll eat my words. I'll gladly eat my words. I don't think we'll ever see a better Daredevil at this point. Probably not. It's no. too close. It's too good. And he even has like just all these little mannerisms about him. Um, but yeah, like just constantly like, yeah, the, the little buddy cop moments. I love it. Uh, like Moon Knight, I would have loved to have seen another um, character. Now we did get um, the Red Scarab, I think her name is, or no, Scarlet Scarab. Um, but to be fair, 
I would I would have liked to have seen another bigger superhero in there as well, not to compete with the story, but to add to the story. I think that would have been really cool, just to kind of give that give it that breath. Um, yeah, so that's kind of like my big one, the Marvel team ups. I, I definitely want to see more of it. Uh, a Disney Plus show does not have to be one character and uh, give us a cameo. No, it could be two characters. And, you know, at first they don't like each other, they don't play well, and then later on they're forced to deal with each other again, and then they realize, you know, hey, you got to solve this problem together. Yeah. Yes, give me that. Like, look how give me that. Like a Falcon Winter Soldier. How Perfect. That's a Marvel team-up movie That's in the title. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think team-up shows, even if it was, like, a show that was just called Marvel Team-Up, where yeah. every episode was, like, Oh my god, yes. Hour, just, just whatever. Absolutely. That would be a lot of fun. I think that because all the whispers of Spider-Man 4, mm-hmm. theoretical Spider-Man 4, are him going to college, I think the odds of seeing Human Torch in that college are very, very high. Human Torch, Firestarter, Iceman, all mm-hmm. of them. There was a rumor that there was a pitch like that at the at the studios for that kind of movie. Okay. But, but at the same time, you're absolutely right. Like, he's in college. He's going to run into... He could run into... Each episode, he could run into a different character. Iceman, Black Cat, you know? Do you think I could play Iceman? Hey, chill, dude. <laughs> uh, no. Huh? I mean, I would love for that to happen to you, but I hope they write you better. I hope they write me better. Yeah. Does he have a catchphrase, Iceman? I can't remember. Uh, Help me! I think I think it actually is like, hey man, chill, or something like oh, that. Oh, yeah. I'm so sorry, Marvel. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Trying to think now. Uh, let's, not, let's not dwell on it too yeah. long. Ago. But yeah, but like, like you could, but my point as well is like, you could do a, a Marvel team-up series and have it X-Men themed. Like have one character... Uh, team up with different members of the X-Men on a one-on-one basis to spend more time with each character get more story all that stuff She-Hulk felt like it was almost going in that direction that I would be a team up of the week thing I would love that yeah maybe season two if there is one will be more like that fingers crossed Um, and maybe by that point we'll have an even bigger roster of characters so you know she could jump in there with Spider-Man she could jump in there with Jessica Jones Moon Knight yeah, absolutely. So it's all there waiting to be taken. We're just gonna... but, and you know what else, though, is I want them to double down on that. And they're starting to, with a particular Phase 5 movie, they're kind of starting to. Mm-hmm. But let's see some villain team-ups. Right? Yeah, It's about time. It's, it's about, about time. About time. Let's see what happens when, I don't know, uh, Hobgoblin and... <laughs> Help me out here. The Crossbones. <laughs> When they meet each other and they're just like, hey, you want to like wreck some stuff? Yeah, man. It's like, going to wreck it. <laughs> um, no, I would love to, like, for example, I would love to see Kingpin and, uh, 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 what's her name? Valentina team uh, up. Uh-huh. You know, like, I would love, oh my God, I would love it. It won't happen at this point. But um, I would love Vincent D'Onofrio's Kingpin and, uh, oh my god, William Defoe's Green Goblin, Norman Osborn. <sighs> the stories they could tell, the stories they could tell. Even just Kingpin putting together, like, okay, Scorpion, Chameleon, no, Rhino, I, go. <laughs> right? Mysterio, Kingpin and Mysterio, that would have been There's, a good one. Oh, you could do so much there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's a great, great number two, the team-ups. Um I feel like our lists are like two different lists at this point. They are very different lists. <laughs> but, I mean, technically this might count as a crossover now, Ryan. Okay. Because... So now we're on two. My number two... Or are we on three? So wait, no, because that, we connected on Vision, so that's yes. one. So your number two was the team-ups. Yes. And my number two also involves a team-up. Ooh. So it's technically a crossover. But here's the thing. You know, you talked about the team up where one hero meets another hero and they go off and they do some stuff and it's really fun. Yeah, I live for that. Right? What happens when another one comes in and they all happen to be doing this? Oh my God. Spider-Man. Spider-Man is my number two moment in phase four. The Spider-Man. The Spider-Man. That, uh, talk about a movie that's special. Talk about an event I mean, there have been some really, there's beautiful special moments in uh, Multiverse Madness and beautiful special moments in Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, but 
as far as phase four is concerned, nothing is more of an event that shakes planet Earth than Spider-Man No Way Home. And particularly, not only the villain team up, but three Spider-Men from all the generations. And, and they, they meet up and they are, not only are they, they're together for a long time. It's not a cameo. No. Nope. It's not a cheap little thing. Like, you know, I, I don't mean to say this, use this as a negative example, because I did really like the movie, but it's not like Ghostbusters Afterlife, where it's like, oh yeah, here's Bill Murray, and he's gone. <laughs> right? Um, it's not that kind of gratuitous fan service cameo. This is a story that these two guys become a part of. Uh, these two other Peters have stakes in what's happening here, mm. and they come with all this baggage from these worlds that don't even make, you know, they, they're not part of this world, but we know what they're doing and we know why they're here, and it all fits together so well, and it becomes this tale of, like, these three brothers, more or less, and just the, the way they played off each other and how much they cared about each other. I like that there was no misunderstanding fight. Yeah. You know, I like just, we don't need, it's Spider-Man. We know he's a nice guy and, like, he cares about people, so, of course, he would care about another Peter mm -hmm. and their relationship of just taking care of each other for the last half hour of that movie or whatever it was. Chef Kiss. Chef Kiss with one of these attached to it uh spider-man what more can you say what more honestly I, I i am left kind of speechless but i will add just like just kind of like a little little add in there you have to think how genius it is because it's an intergenerational movie like it's because you're you have people like ourselves who were roughly quite young when the first spider-man came out with toby Maguire. yeah like ever and that was a huge deal back then. Like, that was just, like, superhero movies are coming now and be, like, you know, brace yourself kind of thing. Um, but then you also have to think of the, the generation that saw The Amazing Spider-Man, which was the early 2000s, uh, and The Amazing Spider-Man. And then they grew up with that. Right. And now you have Tom Holland's Spider-Man. And now we have a new generation. And then you have this movie that brings them all together. And you're right. It's not just a cameo. These, it's, you know, you're passing the torch, but you're also passing this, you know, experience, this wisdom of what, of what these characters have learned in their journeys and bringing it into this. And it's, it's a movie that can really bring fans together in terms of not only is what this experience that this movie is providing from what the movies have learned from each other, yes. but the characters have learned and what the, and the people that have grown with these characters have learned to come to this one wholesome moment. And I, I don't think that could ever be done again personally. Like, yeah, I don't know. I mean, you keep hearing rumors that they want to do another team up movie. And I mean, that would be wild. And I think we would all love that. Absolutely. But can you capture that magic again? That would be really difficult to do. I don't, but like, but that's the thing. You would be, you, you could, but the problem is, is like you're comparing it to the scale of Spider-Man and that's, Spider-Man's been around for years, yeah. years. It would be so hard to do, but a great moment nonetheless. Great moment. And I mean, you all know how I feel about the amazing Spider-Man movies. They are not my favorite. Nope. But the moment of, Andrew Garfield catching MJ made oh me God. cry. And I never in a million years thought Andrew Garfield's version of Spider-Man would get any kind of emotion out of me like that. Yeah. So the fact that they were able to pull that off, like, bravo. Take my money. Just take my money. Take my money. There Beautiful. you go. Beautiful. That's my number two. That's it. All right. Getting into number one for myself. Okay. <laughs> this is this is the obvious crossover one. Uh, all right. I don't know how to like title it. Maybe we'll think of something clever as we go through it. But I'm going to call it the rise of Marvel's villains. Mm, okay. Because first of all, Phase Four. If you look at the grand scale of it all, there are some really good villains and there are some really bad villains. But they 
not only introduced new villains like Gore the God Butcher, uh, you know, and on top of that, um, kind of reintroducing uh, the Mandarin mm -hmm. characters like that. Uh, the big thing for me is just the villains overall, because in Phase Four you introduce Kang. The Conqueror. Yes. And the... I know we're in accounting mode, but I need to describe this a little bit. Uh, Kang the Conqueror comes in in this beautiful kind of Wizard of Oz moment. And I honestly thought... I honestly... I was convinced that we were going to get a cameo at best. Like a last possible second of like, I'm Kang. Like one of those moments. No. But a Wizard of Oz moment where the entire last episode is about a villain who's going to have his own uh, two movies about him. Maybe more. We don't even know. But huge. Then you get reintroduction of Mandarin. You polish him off. You make him look better. You fix him with one line. You fix him with one line. They named the character after a chicken dish. Yeah. And they fixed his entire story. And it's so good. So good. Then you get Kingpin. All right. Big Willie taking his big steps in. Of course, yes, you technically see him in a blurry shot of the phone. But the scene where he's walking in and he's got the black pants, the black shoes and the cane. The, the, the cane that truly defines his character walks in and he's got the white jacket and he sits down in classic Vincent D'Onofrio format. And there was rumors they were going to cartoon him a bit, make him bigger than he seemed. No, Vincent D'Onofrio is a big dude already. Like, he's a six-foot-tall monster of a dude. And, you know, he brings such gravity to his presence with the kingpin. When he sits in that chair, the conversation, epic, right? Just epic. I didn't hear those rumors. I'd be curious. I'm glad they didn't do that, but right. I'd be curious what that would look like. They said they were going to CG him and make him bigger than he seemed. Interesting. But it, you didn't need it. That guy yeah. That guy is so good at acting. His his intimidation alone put that, you put that weight on him. Just literally, both emotionally and physically. Wow. Um, all right. So you got those, you got some big ones. Yeah. Kang, Mandarin, and Kingpin right out of the gate. Uh -huh. All right. Not only that, okay, you got Gore the God Butcher, who I would say was a very scary, intimidating uh, villain mm -hmm. overall. You got Taskmaster. Now, Taskmaster also was an interesting villain. I'll tell you why. Because Taskmaster, again, may not have had the right backstory, but the character looks and performs like a, a really intimidating villain in itself. Yes. When the second that missile... Hits Widow's truck and comes out with the sword and everything. Oh, my. that fight scene in general is amazing. Uh, so we have that. Not only that, we have the return of Zemo. If you watch Falcon and Winter Soldier on the second take, um, you actually start to realize how genius this character is and, more importantly, why he's so scary. Uh, and he's an amazing villain. And, and again, I don't know if, if Wakanda is going to be able to hold him. I think he's going to figure out a way out. Yeah. Because because he always seems to have like Kingpin, he always seems to have a, a one last card to play to get him out of something. He was stuck in that German prison. My bet is he was actually waiting for you know uh, the power broker and the events to get worse so he can play his hand and then get get Bucky to get him out. Right. Right. So you have the return of Zemo. So and then on top of that you have the fix and reintroductions of Doc Ock. Green Goblin as well, which is huge. Uh, and, yeah, it's... Ah, oh, man, I just... A much better Electro. A much better Electro. Infinitely better than what we got yeah. as well. Uh, and, of course, Jameson. Yeah. Jameson's new, uh, technically a villain as well. So there's just all these villains being re like either reintroduced or introduced in this one, but they were all intimidating and they all brought that like that Marvel villain tone to them that just gets me so excited like that that this is going to be like a comic book throwdown and like don't get me wrong like one of the best throwdowns I saw in this phase was No Way Home when Greed Goblin and and uh, Spider-Man were duking it out in the hallways uh -huh. there were power bombs there were sidewalk slams there were just like it was like it was like an epic superhero wrestling match and I was all for it um so yeah, so it was this phase, I would have to say, if you look, if you go through the woods and like look at all the villains, 
like, you know, they're not great. Like, Titania, she was good, but she wasn't great. Abomination was nice to see again. Mm -hmm. But if you look at some of the main contenders of villainy in this phase, like, you know, Kang, Kingpin, and Zemo alone are like, wow. Just wow. Those are big deals. And they have, they've gotten flack for their villains in the past. Yes. Marvel has. And I think to Oh, oh my God. And I forgot one of the major ones. Namor. 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 So like, I would even say those top four villains can give you so many stories, so much presence, so much intimidation. Like the superhero fights with Namor even. Like when he flexes the muscle after freaking Baku tries to hit him. Yes. Epic. But those four villains alone truly define the villainy of where Marvel can go. And those villains set a high bar. And the fact that they still have them on their roster, they're not gone. Yeah. That's, sign me up. That's my favorite thing about those four villains right now is that they are still alive and they're out there. Yeah. And who knows what they're up to. And then not only that, but you have a villain like uh, Contessa Valentina. Yes. Who is a villainous Nick Fury. And, you know, we can't, forget how dangerous that is because if the infinity saga was all about nick fury bopping into some room being like okay you're part of my crew now and now all of a sudden it's her doing that she's getting dangerous people she's getting u.s agent that guy is a nut job i don't want him anywhere near me yeah but she's recruiting him for things and that's going to spell all kinds of fun for us and trouble for the Mm -hmm. avengers not only that, you have these great people like Kingpin and King, and then you have, you mentioned the Shadow Broker, who could be Kingpin, he could be somebody else we haven't met yet, who knows? And we have looming on the horizon, the rise of Thunderbolt Ross. Yes. So the villains are going to be a much bigger and better presence than they were in the Infinity Saga, and I am all for that because I've been pulling for a villain team versus hero team pretty much my whole life yeah so oh honestly yeah yeah. make it happen kevin just give it to us make it happen and uh then give us the annihila story we all need starring leslie bibb Mm. so that's a great number one thank you i like that thank you uh i thought long and hard on that one that was actually that was that one that one sat with me for a while i was like how can i because I talked about Marvel team-ups, and I thought that that was very represent- representative of Marvel. But I'm like, you know, a lot of people say, like, Marvel doesn't have villains. But if you really if you really dig, they, they do. And MCU's definitely got some big hitters now. Yes. Big hitters. Uh, and that, I think, is a perfect number one because of your list. It's the most um, promising thing for Phases 5 and Beyond. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. It's, it says the most about what we can expect and how good it's going to be. So there's, there's really, there's so much to get excited for when it comes to just the villains. And who knows who we haven't met yet who have planned. I mean, Doom is coming. Eventually. Oh, we want Doctor Doom. Yeah, Doom we is going to show up. Yeah. Galactus is going to show up. Absolutely. Um... X-Men villains are going to be... We need Magneto back, man. Yeah, Mojo. Bring some Mojo. More uh, importantly, we need Magneto. <laughs> yeah. uh, but more importantly, Mojo. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, so my number one. Um, again, it falls onto a specific scene. And it's a Disney Plus scene, once Ooh. again. I feel like yours is definitely majority of Disney Plus. I think so, because it was... Because Kingpin, Vision, and now this are all Disney pluses. Mm -hmm. So um, the reason this was number one, and it flip-flops for a while, but I feel like at the end of the day, you are telling a story about superheroes, about comic book superheroes, so it would benefit you as the writer to take advantage of whatever the powers are that your superhero has, whatever their abilities are, whatever the abilities their villains might be, and use those as the secret ingredient in your story. Because you could tell the exact same personal human story with two guys from Iowa, but it won't have whatever this magic or or technology or space or whatever is happening. Mm -hmm. So you have to understand the fact that this is unique to you and embrace that uniqueness while at the same time 
making the story worth telling, making it powerful enough, making it a universally human story that people can sink their teeth into and get behind and relate to, mm-hmm. right? If you can make us relate to somebody like Namor, who is a fish man with Spock ears, you're doing something right. Absolutely. So the reason this is my number one is because it ticks those boxes. It ticks the box of, God, this is beautiful, and I know exactly what this person is feeling and what the story is trying to make me uh, make me feel and make me uh, um, empathize with, mm-hmm. and it's also embracing wholeheartedly the powers of the characters involved. And that moment is Wanda creating Westview. Oh, good choice. That had to be number one for me. There was at, once I put that math together in my head, there was no other place for it but number one. Mm-hmm. It's exactly what a superhero story, a well-told superhero story should be, which is high stakes, incredible emotional stakes included in that. And to top it all off, it's happening with this undercurrent of like, yeah, she's magic. She's going to make a reality and not for giggles because it's cool, but she is like a horrifically broken human being Mm -hmm. who has just had the worst kind of crap happen to her. And That's the result. Yeah. And the fact that all of those pieces came together and it worked and it gave us nine episodes of a show that were brilliant. Like it's, it's incredible. It's incredible that it turned out that good. And to this day, I think that's my favorite on screen interpretation of any superpower ever period. Marvel, DC, whatever. Um, I I told you how I've been showing the MCU to my mom slowly but surely, and the last thing we saw was WandaVision, and she really really dug it, and she says how she remembers seeing me watching it when it was new, and she was like, "What is this weird thing? Why why are they walking around like it's the Dick Van Dyke show?" Yeah, yeah. And now that she has seen it, she goes, "You know, now I understand who this character is." She goes, "That's a really cool show." So it's mom approved. Hey. hey. Uh, there's there's literally nothing wrong with WandaVision in, in that regard. So yeah. that's my number one. And there you go. So those are our top moments of Marvel Phase Four. Uh, I yeah no that's that's a deep one for sure. And I yeah I, I mean just that moment where she's like like sees the the deed to the house mm-hmm. and just. All the the things that she internalized of like the moments they wanted to have together, and she just literally unleashes it. Yes. Oh, oh man. Um, but yeah, no. So you know, when we look back at these Phase Four moments, honestly, there's some real gems. But I mean, when people look at Phase Four overall, they kind of take a step back and are like, uh, you know, kind of not great. You know, it's not a great phase. It's kind of missing some things. I actually think it's quite the opposite. I think there are a lot, there's a lot going on here and you kind of got to sift through it to find what you are looking for, which kind of brings it to this nice moment of like, this is what we found. That was amazing. Yes. I'm very excited. I'm very, very excited for what's to come because now I, I think the, the biggest mystery of phase four, um, was that nobody knew where it was going. No, they And Kevin Kevin was bragging. He's like, oh, you should know by now. And it's like, Whoa. <laughs> it's because you have all the answers. But, like, but there's some real gem moments that definitely demonstrate where it's going. But, yeah, I mean, overall, there's I think there's some deeply emotional moments in Phase 4. Like, that really, it, it kind of really shines on, like, moving on. Definitely, yes. there's a lot of talk of like moving on and that kind of thing, and yeah, it's it's um, it was an interesting phase for sure. It was, I, and I think interesting kind of feels like an understated phase, but I, it if you really take to meaning what I'm trying to say, there's a lot there, like a lot. There is, and it's. I, I think I like to look at it this way: phase three, because that that's pretty much universally, I think, everybody's favorite phase. Yeah, phase three was. A Thanksgiving dinner and you know you've got your stuffing and you've got your giant turkey which is endgame and you've got your mashed potatoes and your pumpkin pie and your vegetables stuffing. and all oh, that stuff it's a table laden with goods right uh, but here's the thing that's such a big meal there's going to be leftovers 
And without being disparaging about it, phase four is the leftovers in the sense that so you're going to have a turkey sandwich for a couple of days before you cook another big meal. And it's a good sandwich. Sometimes, you know, arguably it's even better the second day when you put some sauce on that sandwich and, you know, you sprinkle some seasoning on it, right? It's going to taste like what you ate on Thanksgiving, but a little bit different. And then you might throw in some other little things that weren't part of Thanksgiving dinner until all of a sudden you've got a new meal and a new meal. And then, hey, next thing you know, it's Thanksgiving again. But you got to let the calendar run back before, you know, you're not going to go out and buy a turkey the next yeah. month. <laughs> so yeah. you got to appreciate meals, period. And I think this was a, phase four was a beautiful meal with lots of different flavors to choose from. It was, def- phase four was some really good leftovers. You know, realizing that you could still remember the taste of that turkey dinner that you mm. had. It's a good metaphor. I'm trying to play on it, but I think I think I summed it up right there. Um, absolutely. So there you have it. That's our that's our top moments. Um, which breaks the question. One last big thing. Yeah. What is the big thing you're most looking forward to in Phase Five? Oh, I love this question. Okay. Um, tell me yours, because I have to remember okay. what is in Phase Five. So for me, I think the biggest project that I'm looking forward to in phase five in the, the the very soon, like the very quick and happening. As much as I am so excited for Quantum Mania, there's a hidden gem here that I think speaks volumes to how epic it's going to be, and that is the secret invasion. Mm. I cannot begin to tell you how excited I am for that. <laughs> it's going to be really good. Um, and so with phase four, what saga did they say it was? Because isn't phase five the multiverse saga? No, four, five, and six is the multiverse. Oh, yeah. okay. All right. Then what happens after that? Did you say it was Aqua West? No. Um, it was probably the mutants. Oh, yes, that's right. Okay, we don't know. But yeah, so right now, I would have to say that the most exciting thing for me in the immediate future right now, I mean, we got some heavy hitters. We got Daredevil coming. We got. Um, uh, we got Thunderbolts coming as well. We got Loki season two. Uh, I would say the one that's going to surprise us and be like a fun ride is definitely Secret Invasion. I think you're right about it surprising us because it's the one that we really don't know that much about. I mean, but the know, trailer's so good. The trailer's good, but it's very withholding, and that's not a bad thing. We have right. talked about how trailers can be just the opposite. You can see that video, um, but it's. It's one of those trailers that you don't even really get a sense of what the story of the show is going to be. It's just people saying something ominous is about to happen. It's happening. Secret invasion, right? Um, so Nick I, Fury's coming back from space. Nick Fury's going to be back from space. Or is it? Nick Fury. That's right. It could be. It could be one of these. It could be a scroll. That's my. That's how you say scroll. That's how they the, the, the reveal. Uh, but I think you're right about it being the most the thing that's going to surprise us because I feel like it's not on the radars as much as other things just be, like it's literally being cradled by quantum mania yeah. and then guardians so you you're it's going to be hidden and it's going to do something that i think is going to shock people so mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, i like that i like secret invasion as your pick i think for me guardians volume three is a very close runner-up because with guardians volume three it's something where I don't, I'm not saying I know what's going to happen, but because we know the Guardians, we know what to expect from a Guardians movie. Yes. Um, so that is, it, it puts it in a spot where it's like, yeah, this is going to be good because I know from experience that they're good, but I also have no idea what's going to happen. Uh, and that's why I feel like it just loses out to Thunderbolts. Of course. I am, I am very excited about Thunderbolts. Yeah, I am very excited about it too. Thunderbolts is, I, it's something where I only know the premise and I feel like it's going to take us places that we've never gone before mm. in the MCU and it's going to change the MCU in the way that Civil War did. Mm. Where it's going to be a big, ginormous, non-Avengers movie with a giant cast of characters that's going to shake up how the MCU is and how it operates. And it's going to change the hierarchy to use a DC term. Interesting. Well, 
it's definitely going to be an interesting phase, that's for sure, as we cl- as we get into deeper into the multiverse saga. Um, so this is definitely going to be an interesting run. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, it's funny. People talk about the Holy Trilogy and, like, you know, making it to three movies and getting some big close-up story. Kevin Feige is closing sagas. <laughs> yeah. He's, he's going to be on his third saga after this, which is insane. Wow. But, uh, but yes, Phase 5, I think Phase 5 now, we have the, we have... We know where it's going, and man, it's going to be fun. Like, it's going to be good. Uh, so, yeah, with Phase 4, I think there's some real gems, uh, but I think this, these pieces are setting up a massive chess game, and it's going to be a really fun game to play out. I know, I can't wait. And there's a poster right there on your wall of Kang looking like he's about to play chess with the Avengers. So, there you go. It's going to be epic. He's going to do something in that quantum verse. Uh, well, that has been our top five phase four moments which is a very tricky thing to say and every time i've said it out loud to you i've, I've had to like check myself and be like did <laughs> i say it wrong do i sound like a dum-dum am i going to do it backwards um but that is not our final holiday episode ryan we you have know. one more coming and it's coming at the tail end of the probably actually in the beginning of the new year it's probably yeah. i think january 1st is when we're going to drop it and you know what it is because we did it last year ranking the marvel movies and what else Oh my god. So, uh, in case you haven't watched it already, in case you haven't watched it already, we have the trailers. Mm. We are talking about the trailers. Uh, and so, we did a list on trailers that have spoiled Marvel movies for us. Yeah. For shame, I say. For shame. How dare you show us that Wonder Woman is going to be in Black Widow 3? How dare you? replacing Black Widow. Um, but yeah, so uh, this is our special kind of holiday lineup. I hope you guys are enjoying it. Uh, and uh, yeah, stay tuned. we got more creative content coming up here on Infinity Rewatch. Ooh, and until that happens, I hope you all have a wonderful holiday season. Especially you, Ryan. Especially you, Fantasia. Ah, thank you so yeah. much. You are my phase four. Oh, I don't know. That's I don't know that kind of a backhanded compliment. I know. I, I apologize. <laughs> you are my... You are my infinity gauntlet, as in you are a beautiful, colorful work of art that everybody wants in their life, but I'm lucky enough to have you on my hand. Thank you. Yes. That's, that's really nice. And until next time, have a marvelous day. Let's do it. Ooh, that was, yeah, that was we didn't even plan nice that. Job. We didn't plan that clap. All right. All right. Back to, back to our regular schedule program. Here we go.